All right. Hello. Welcome to this video, which I think I will be calling the definitive transcription of the Meshuggah Spasm drum break. Right here, here's the pattern. I've written it in this awesome online um, tool. In I've, I've written it in thirteen eight here. To me, it's a, I'd actually look at it as twenty six sixteenth. That's how I understand my sugar stuff. It's usually like that. I but I don't actually think of it in. <laughs> A bunch of time signatures it's just a phrase that's repeated and resolves within the 4-4 structure so that's the pattern um, here it is the first part is just instrumental and it's more basic instrumentally as well The vocals come in and the instrumentation gets more complex. It's, a, it's torn, undone, dissolved. Alright, yeah, so first what I showed you is just this is what repeats, but it's in the context of 4-4, four, four, so I, it's 4-4, four, four because it feels different if you keep jumping as if you've got a 1. It, it, this is not the 1 the second time and the third time. It's not on 1, so it's that's not the time signature. The time signature is 4-4 four, four, because it, it feels different in context of where the pulse is. What makes it groove anyway so what's how is this different than what's been done before we've got uh, transcript and cover by Troy Wright um, several covers yeah I can tell you only one of these is playing pretty much what's on the album and it's this one. Probably got the least views. The reason is, if we go back to my transcription here, there's a Tom. Uh, he's, this guy is the only guy who's hitting the Tom on the doom, 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 doom. Um, so let's bring up the actual song and I'll show you. You only have to listen to it. You just once you know it's there, you can hear it. But it's very it's a tight sound. It doesn't resonate. It's like a very gated floor tom, but it's there. Right, so this is mixed from the drummer's perspective, and that tom. If you've got headphones or if you've got a decent stereo setup, it's on the right hand side. You can hear it just. But I'm going to chuck in this tool where I can bring down the mid channel by like six, nearly seven decibels just to bring the, the key, everything that's mono comes down in volume. So yeah, if you've got a decent listening like headphones right now or or whatever it's clearly there's a tom there and the other thing that um it gives you it, it shows you that the sticking is wrong for anyone that's played this and their hand alternates once the the crash or the china accents start coming in 
because here we'll go back to the original uh, and I'll literally go to the original mix that's what these two waves are the original is now soloed and what we previously just uh, had playing was the remix version all right, so again, the drums are mixed is it from the drummer's perspective. So just for for the sake of explaining that, if you don't know what I mean, the sounds come from the perspective as if you were sitting behind the kit. So the the biggest floor toms are to your right for the right-handed drummer. And the cymbals are panned as they they sound as they would look to you if you were sitting right there. The sound comes from basically Right, so he's hitting the same china and it's on the right hand side. It's obviously it's the one above the one that's accessible on the right hand side. It's the same one whereas say some of these covers and transcriptions you'll see the guy's is using his left to hit some of them accents. So and as I already explained, only one guy is hitting the tom. So yeah, the, the China is on the right-hand side. That's why you can say, in my opinion, that this is the sticking. Um, so here's my bad version of playing it. Right, so basically it's the ergonomical logic tells you what's being played on the record if you listen to where things are. I don't really want to keep listening to myself butcher that. But um I'll chuck the links to these three transcriptions in the in the description of this video. Um if you appreciate that, please uh subscribe. Um if you encourage me then I'll do heaps of shit like this and I'd like to do that. So, get on it. Now, this, what will happen, these links, this is an awesome tool. Um, Mike's Lessons, Groove Scribe here. Look, this whole transcription, the whole, the whole code is in the link. Hence why I can just put the link and it's all there. Uh, it's mad. It's the sickest tool. I love it. So I'll put the link to these. Um, I'll leave this there. I think if, if anyone wants to play this, you know, Meshuggah is famous for obviously the, the sick ass musicianship, but this is one of the most famous bits. And as I've displayed, there's only one correct cover and ironically the dude's only got 420 views but um 
you know, everyone else has done this. They've played their their way awesomely, better than I did. Mine is terrible. I'm terrible with ghost notes. I'm just, yeah. You know, obviously, Troy Wright's, yeah, it, what, the way that he's played it, apart from, like, nailing it, it's harder to do. Like, it's just a class, this is a class that I can't attain. You know, that's, you know, sensational drumming, and uh, as with everyone else, but, um, you know, I'll play through these one more time. <laughs> 